Beta weighting is a fundamental risk management technique that every trader should be aware of. If you aren't using beta weighting or don't even know what beta weighting is, don't worry. In this video, you will learn everything you need to know about beta weighting. To understand beta weighting, it is important to first understand what beta is. Beta is a measure of volatility risk relative to some benchmark. More often than not, this benchmark is SPY, which is an ETF that tracks the S&P 500 index. So for the rest of this video, we will just be using SPY as this benchmark. But note that you could change this and use some other security if you wanted to. Here's a table that explains what different beta values mean. Let's look at a specific example to clarify what beta is. If stock XYZ has a beta of 0.5, it is 50% less volatile than SPY. This means that in theory, if SPY moves up by $1, XYZ should move up by $0.5. The same goes for a down move. A beta of over 1 means that XYZ is more responsive than the market and a beta of minus 1 means that XYZ has the same degree of volatility but in the other direction. So for every $1 move up in SPY, XYZ moves down by $1 and vice versa. Note that, in reality, this correlation is never this perfect, but the more correlated two securities are, the more reliable their beta values become. With beta out of the way, there's one more Greek that we need to cover to understand beta weighting. This Greek is delta. Delta is most commonly used among options traders to measure directional risk. Let's quickly go through some examples to clarify what delta is. For this, we will use XYZ as the underlying asset. A position of one share in XYZ will have a delta of one. This means that for every $1 up move in XYZ, this position will gain $1. Furthermore, for every $1 decline in XYZ, the position will lose $1. A long put position in XYZ could have a delta of minus 15, which means that it gains $15 for every $1 drop in XYZ. On the flip side, this position would lose $15 for a $1 increase in XYZ's price. Last but not least, an iron condor, which is an option trading strategy, has a delta of zero. This means it's not directly affected by price changes in XYZ. Note that delta usually is not constant. This means that while the underlying asset's price changes, so will the delta of your positions. If you have more than one position on a security, you can simply add up all the deltas of your positions to get your net delta. The result represents your overall directional exposure to that security. This can be a great way to evaluate your directional risk. It would be great if you could do this for your entire portfolio. The problem with this is that by simply adding up the deltas of different positions, you don't account for differences in volatility. Let me give you a specific example. A 100 share position in SPY has a delta of 100, but a 100 share position in Tesla also has a delta of 100, even though Tesla clearly is much more volatile than SPY, which makes the Tesla position much riskier than the SPY position. That's why you can't really use delta by itself to compare the directional risk of different positions. Otherwise, buying 100 shares of SPY would be just as risky as buying 100 shares of Tesla. To solve this problem, we must weigh each delta so that it accounts for the volatility of its underlying asset. This is where beta comes into play. So what is beta weighting? Instead of adding up all the deltas of your positions, we first beta weight the deltas and then add them up. To beta weight a delta, we simply multiply it by the underlying's beta value and by the underlying's price divided by the benchmark price. Typically, the benchmark is SPY. Doing this for all your delta values and then adding them all up will give you a beta weighted delta value for your entire portfolio. But what does this actually tell you? 
The beta weighted delta of your portfolio tells you your total directional exposure to the overall market. In other words, it states how your entire portfolio's P&L is affected by price changes in the market. For a $1 move in SPY, the P&L of all your positions should change by about the amount of this delta. Even though the beta weight delta on its own is useful, it only gives you a very limited and static outlook into your portfolio's risk profile. Together with prices, the deltas of your positions also change. To account for these changing deltas, it is possible to create a risk graph for your entire portfolio. This graph could, for instance, look something like this. Just like a normal payoff diagram, the y-axis represents the P&L of the position and the x-axis describes the price of the underlying security. Here, the underlying security is the benchmark index, or SPY. The orange line represents the beta-weighted delta of your portfolio and the blue line represents its P&L. As you can see, this portfolio profits most if the market either stays where it is right now or moves up and beyond 120. This portfolio is very much exposed to big price drops in the market. In addition to evaluating your risk profile, beta weighting also allows you to calculate an expected daily change for your portfolio's P&L. To calculate this expected move, we must first calculate the expected daily price move. So let's do this for SPY. At the time of creating this video, SPY was trading at $250. Furthermore, it had an implied volatility of about 50%. To calculate the daily expected move of SPY, we simply have to multiply SPY's IV by its price and by the square root of 1 over 265. The result of this is close to $8, which means that SPY's price is expected to move to between $242 and $252 one day from now. Now we simply have to multiply these $8 by the net beta weight delta of our portfolio. If our net delta is 20, the result of this will be $160. This means that our portfolio's P&L is expected to change by somewhere between plus and minus $160 in a day. If we divide this figure by our total account capital, we get the expected daily change in terms of a percentage points of our portfolio. Note that these calculations assume 265 trading days in a year, a constant delta and a normal distribution of stock returns. These aren't the most realistic assumptions. Nevertheless, this is a great way to get a rough estimate for your daily portfolio's P&L fluctuations. I highly recommend checking out my video on implied volatility to learn more about the expected move and IV. Let's now quickly sum up why beta weighting is so helpful. First of all, beta weighting adds comparability. It normalizes all of your position's deltas to one unit. This allows you to do a true apples to apples comparison. Without beta weighting your deltas, you can't reliably compare the directional exposure of different positions. In addition to that, beta weighting allows you to create a payoff profile for your entire portfolio. This is a great way to evaluate and manage your directional risk. Last but not least, beta weighting allows you to estimate the expected daily price fluctuations of your overall portfolio. Next up, let's take a look at how beta weighting can help you manage your risk. Firstly, it is important to have an overall directional assumption of the overall market around which you can build your portfolio. In theory, this can be everything from very bearish to very bullish. It can, however, be hard to always have a clear directional bias. Furthermore, being too directional can expose you to big risks. Therefore, it can be advantageous to stay delta neutral. But what exactly does delta neutral mean? A delta neutral position is one with a delta somewhere around zero. Such a position is not significantly affected by changes in the underlying price. An iron condor would be an example of a delta neutral option strategy. It achieves max profit if the price of the underlying stays right where it is.
Think about it. The vast majority of days, SPY does not change by more than one dollar. So why would you construct a highly directional portfolio if you can just stay neutral or slightly directional? To make this even clearer, let's compare the payoff diagram of a classic stock portfolio to the payoff of a delta neutral one. For this, let's assume both portfolios expire in 45 days. Which of the following portfolios would you rather have? The first long delta portfolio clearly outperforms the latter if the market has a huge rally. But if there's no huge rally or even a decline, the payoff profile of the delta neutral portfolio is certainly preferable. All in all, a delta neutral portfolio is much more versatile and leaves much more room for error than a highly directional one. I hope these examples show you how having a neutral portfolio can be advantageous. With that being said, you obviously still can have some directional skew to your payoff profile. In a bull market, for instance, it can be favorable to be slightly bullish. Just make sure to keep your directional exposure in check. As a rough guideline, you could try to keep your beta weighted delta of all your positions below 0.5% of your total account capital. So if you have a $10,000 account, try to keep your beta weighted delta between minus 50 and 50. To achieve this, you will have to balance out positive and negative delta positions. To do this, let us now take a look at how beta weighting should affect the process of opening and managing trades. Before opening a new position, you should always first evaluate its effect on your overall portfolio. You should check if the position is a good fit for your portfolio. Here are two questions to consider before opening, closing or adjusting a position. How does it affect the risk profile of your portfolio? And does it add or reduce directional risk? If you're trying to stay market neutral and your portfolio currently has a beta weighted delta of 200, you should try to add some negative beta weighted delta positions to balance this out. When doing this, make sure to keep the profitable range of your portfolio wide enough. You don't want a neutral portfolio with a $2 wide profit range. Last but not least, let's take a look at beta weighting in Tastyworks. For those that don't know, Tastyworks is the broker that I use and I recommend. For this, we must first navigate to the Positions tab inside the Tastyworks desktop platform and in the header you will be able to see the net beta weight delta of your portfolio. This is the beta weighted directional exposure of your entire portfolio to the market. In the Positions tab, you will be able to see the beta weighted delta of each position. This is marked in orange. Right next to it, you can see the normal non-beta weighted delta of the position. This is marked in yellow. Generally, if a delta has a beta symbol in front of it, it is beta weighted and otherwise it's not. If your Positions tab looks different than this one, note that you can add or remove these displays in the settings. By default, everything is beta weighted to SPY. This, however, can easily be changed by clicking on the settings icon here. If you decide to change this, make sure to choose a broad security that is correlated to as many of your positions as possible. Speaking of correlation, you can see the three month correlation between a security and SPY in the right hand sidebar under the securities overview tab. Note that this is not the same as beta. To see the beta of a security, you will have to turn on the beta display in the settings menu. Tastyworks also allows you to see the payoff profile of your overall portfolio. As of right now, this feature is only available in the Tastyworks web platform. To view this graph, navigate to the portfolio tab inside the web-based platform and standardly, you will see the PL profile of your entire portfolio in the top right corner. You can also deselect certain positions to view the risk profile of a group of positions. Furthermore, here you can also view the potential impact of a new position on your portfolio before opening it. 
To read my full review of Tastyworks, check out the link in the description box below. Beta weighting can be a great way to assess your overall market risk. Furthermore, it allows you to better compare the directional exposure of your positions. With that being said, it is still important to assess the risk of individual positions separately. Don't focus all of your risk management efforts on beta weighting. Individual positions still need individual care. Furthermore, it is important to use a highly correlated security when beta weighting. Applying beta weighting to uncorrelated positions won't give you a realistic representation of your risk. In my opinion, it is best to use a broad market ETF such as SPY. But if you're trading a sector that's not represented by SPY, use some major market ETF in that sector. Alternatively, you could also break down your portfolio into different sector groups and beta weight them separately. But if you don't want to make it too complicated, just use SPY. To truly reap the benefits of beta weighting, it is important that your broker supports this feature. One of my favorite brokers that has beta weighting is Tastyworks. So make sure to check out my detailed review of Tastyworks in the description box below. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for watching.